Hey, welcome back. In this video, I'm just going over one more example about how to find the reaction uh, at some connection uh, in a 2D statics problem. So what we're looking at here is we have our wall here that's totally fixed, that's not moving anywhere, it's stationary, and we have this sort of black uh, bracket or beam or something with an L shape, and it has a fixed connection to the wall at A. So this thing is in static equilibrium, we're applying these forces to it, and we want to figure out what is the reaction force uh, here at A. So the first thing we need to do is we will draw a free body diagram. Um, <clears throat> so first thing we want to do is just label it so people know that we're looking at the free body diagram and then we can also uh, put on our coordinate axis here so we have X and Y. Alright and then what we'll do is we'll just add on our forces, that, all of the external forces that are acting on this L-shaped bracket and again we're separating it from the wall, we're just considering the free body diagram of this bracket. So, we have this force going up, we have 400 newtons, we know we have this force going out at 300 newtons. Um, we should split this one into its x and y components. Um, so its x component uh, would be uh, is 500 cos 30, and that actually works out to be uh, 433 newtons. Newtons and its y component is uh, 500 sine 30, and that works out to be actually 250 newtons. And the directions here are that way and that way, right? Because the x component would go like that, and the y component would go down like that. Okay, so we can draw those on so we know that we'll have this x component here, which is 433 newtons. And then from this point, pulling down, we know we'll have that 250 newtons. All right, the other thing that we have to add on here is our reaction forces at A that's caused by this fixed support. If you remember from the last video, fixed support can provide uh, a reaction in the x direction, in the y direction, and it can also uh, apply a moment, basically, to this object. If this was a hinge, it wouldn't be able to resist a moment. Um, but because it's fixed, it's definitely, you know, if this is uh, bolted to the wall or something and we try and rotate our object like this, it's going to resist us and, uh, and fight that with uh, a moment. All right, so uh, we should label these. We'll call this a X, we'll call this a Y, and we'll call this M A. All right, let's go ahead and solve for the sum of forces in the X direction. So we have sum of forces in the X direction. Well, for static equilibrium, they have to be set to zero. So let's look at this. We have AX going in the positive X direction, and then we have minus 433 Newtons going the other way, and then we are adding 300 Newtons again in the positive direction for X, and that all has to be equal to zero. So if we just simplify for A, uh, for AX, then we're gonna find that AX, if we just move these to the other side, uh, will be equal to 133 newtons. Um, and that's also the same as saying 133 newtons in that direction, because what we did here is we drew on AX going to the right, and when we solved it, we got a positive answer, and uh, and that means that we're our direction that we assumed was correct. So that makes sense, because if we're thinking about this object, we do have 300 newtons, uh, let's look at it here, we have 300 newtons pulling to the right, we have 433 newtons pulling to the left, and we have to make up that difference with this reaction. So basically the difference between these is just 133, and it has to cancel out that 433 basically. So it makes sense that 133 would be pointing to the right. Um, and so basically this, uh, we're, with the sum of these two forces, we're actually pushing this into the wall, and the wall is pushing back on us to the right. All right, so the sum of forces in the y direction also is zero. So what that means, if we look here, we have a y, and that's positive because we've drawn it going up, and we're going to add in 400. Again, that's in the positive direction, and we'll subtract here 250. And that's, that will be all of our y forces, or forces in the y direction, or that have some y component, that's all equal to zero. And then we can, again, we can simplify for a y by just moving this to the other side, 
and we'll actually get uh, negative 400 plus 250, so we'll get negative 150 newtons. Now this negative sign here means that we did draw, we assumed a direction here and the direction that we assumed was incorrect. So this means actually that we have 150 newtons pointing down. That is what AY is providing with us, providing us with. And again, it makes sense. If you look at this, we're applying a lot of, we're applying 400 newtons up to this object and we're only applying 250 down here. So to cancel out that 450, something else is going to have to push down on our object to prevent it from just drifting up or translating in that direction. So the difference is 150 and basically the wall, because we're pushing it up, the wall is fixed to it and the wall is just pushing essentially down on this object. All right, um, so static equilibrium is satisfied for these two. Now we have to check for a sum of moments. So this sum of moments about A and we'll define counterclockwise as our positive direction. And this must be equal to zero. So. If that's equal to zero, then we can look at this. Well, positive direction is counterclockwise. So we have uh, the moment, the reaction moment about A here. And then we have to figure out what the moments are that all of these other forces are causing. So 400 Newtons here. Um, we have the distance, which was three meters. And these are all perpendicular to the distances that I've drawn on. So we have three meters times the magnitude of the perpendicular force, which is 400 newtons, and that is positive because this would tend, this would create the object to have the tendency to spin that way about A, or you can even look up at it here if that helps. We define counterclockwise as a positive direction. This negative 250, or this 250 over here will be negative because again, 250 is this component, and if the object is allowed to rotate about A, it would tend to, uh, to create a, a, count, a clockwise rotation about that. So clockwise is opposite of our positive sense. So this is going to cause a negative moment. Uh, so we have six meters times the magnitude of the force, which is 250 newtons. And then here, this guy, uh, this is also going to cause a moment. This 433 newtons won't cause a moment because its line of action passes right through the point, but this 300 newtons up here will. And this will cause, if we look at it, uh, it would cause it to rotate that way, which is a negative moment. So we'll have <clears throat> minus our distance to the line of action of the force is uh, one meter. And the magnitude of the force is 300 meters. All right, so this all is equal to zero. And we can simplify this a little bit so we get ma. Uh, this is plus 1200. Newton meters, and then minus 1500 Newton meters, and then this guy would be minus 300 Newton meters, and then we find at the end, now oh, well, that's all equal to zero, and I'll just write it over here, that we have the moment about A, uh, well, I guess we can simplify that again, minus 600 is equal to zero, and then so, moment A is equal to positive 600 Newton meters. And that's the exact same thing as saying, well, we've assumed that this direction is the direction that the moment will be in. And because it's not negative, we don't have to switch the direction. So that means that we did assume the correct direction. So we're saying that's equal to uh, 600 Newton meters in the counterclockwise sense. So the reaction at A is basically all of the forces and moments that the wall is exerting on this object through the connection. So the wall is pushing on our object 133 newtons to the right. It's pushing down on our object 150 newtons. And it's also providing a moment, which is a clockwise 600 newton meters, which cancels out all of the other moments that are applied, uh, that are caused on this object by the forces um, acting about that point A.